First up, we have an appointment with Stephanie Hagen and group for a petition on Article 17, Reduction of Single-Use Plastic Bags in Pembroke. Stephanie Hagen, come to the microphone, please. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Um, I know you guys know we push through as citizens, um, signatures to get the bylaw, the vote bylaw change in fall more. And I you know some of you may or may not be for it, and we wanted to just come from you guys and see if we had a chance to review the bylaw, if there was any questions we have regarding it, or if there's anything in the middle that we could discuss that may help are your support for biology. Not that you support it. That's all right. That's all right. I'm, I'm a fan of the system. Yeah. Sure. So I, I guess it's a great opportunity for you to tell us why you'd like to ban them. Okay. Um, we have, well, we have a team of some of us are very concerned about what um, they're actually doing to the environment in addition to the cost that we're actually paying for them. Um, 81 towns in Mass have already passed a similar, if not same, bylaw. Um, it has already been reviewed by the Attorney General, so by another town. Um, we are concerned about the environment. Um, they, in Pembroke alone, we're using up to 9 million plastic bags that goes down to 531 per person plastic bags. Um, I don't know if you guys watched the Board of Health uh, forum that they had, and they were discussing how we're no longer going to the incinerator, we're going back to the landfill from Taunton. So 9 million bags from Emerald alone are going to the landfill. If they even make it to the landfill, they're so lightweight that they typically, unless they're full of something or, you know, there's 30 bags inside one bag, a lot of them get blown out of trash cans. Um, I have a picture up on our Facebook page of the hand run of plastic bags all over, which is a direct waterway impacting an entire ecosystem um, that runs right to the center of our town. And I think that that should concern you guys too. Um, and I think it would just be smart for us to get on board because Massachusetts will be going to a plastic bag ban in the next few years. Um, it was supposed to be legislated for this year, and it doesn't sound like that's going to happen this year, but it will be coming in the next few years, and I believe it's smart to have our small businesses in compliance before the state comes rushing in and makes them comply anyways. Um, there's a six-month period. Um, between, you know, if it was passed and when it would be applied, so there would be time for us to educate them, help them. Um, small businesses don't have to give us plastic bags to begin with. They're not required. It's not the law to give us a plastic bag. It's their option. They're charging that back to us anyways. Um, so they have the option to provide paper bags, which are 40% post-consumer and they're recyc fully recyclable, they're biodegradable, biodegradable to break down in a year, as opposed to plastic bags, which are none of those things. Um, plastic bags are actually made from oil, and they say it uses up to 8% of the world's oil just to make plastic bags, which is insane. Um, that would bring down our oil costs if we just stopped making plastic bags. We have to, um, and so the bylaw would allow for stores to provide paper bags. They could provide, it outlines in detail the difference between what is considered a single-use plastic bag and what is something that's considered a reusable plastic bag. So they would also have the option to provide those sort of bags if that is what they would like to do. But again, stores are not required by law to provide us any sort of bag. Um, so it's not changing their option provide a bag, it's just changing the type that they can provide. Yeah, anyway. and, uh, Stephanie, you mentioned your Facebook page. Maybe yeah. uh, there are not a lot of people in the room, but there are a lot of people watching. So if you want to give your Facebook page information out and maybe okay. some other contact. A lot of people, a, a lot of people uh, are very interested in this. Okay. Yeah. So 
give your Facebook out and way to contact you, and yeah. you, uh, yeah. hopefully you get a bunch of people okay. contacting you. Well, I'm Stephanie Hagen on um, Facebook, and the Facebook handle is Stephanie Hagen Photography. Um, I also have a Pinterest page, and it's a pub public group, so they can just request to be added. Um, and I can put it on the internet if anyone wants Yeah. Uh, after the forum, because I know Dan and I were at that forum, yeah. uh, the Board of Health put a subcommittee up. Yes. Did anyone from your uh, group go to any of these subcommittee meetings? Because mm -hmm. they left two spots open for this group. We, I was personally never approached to join the subcommittee. Um, we did meet with a subcommittee member two weeks ago. Um, I would say we have some differences regarding the bylaw that we would want to put forward, and I believe that ours is actually more broad than the one that they would be wanting to put forward, which I think would help our small businesses. Um, we could nitpick the little pieces if you'd like, but. They don't have a bylaw put forth yet, so I can't say for sure their bylaw will or will not contain that language. Um, but I believe our bylaw actually protects the small business owner because it provides them more options from what they are discussing. But again, it's not their bylaw is not right, so I can't confirm or say that that's the language they're going to put forth if, it, if our bylaw does not pass the time. Okay. Go ahead. Um, <coughs> Part of their um, their spiel to us, um, you know, back a month or so ago, was that um, they thought they needed more time to study this whole thing and and to come up with the best bylaw for Pembroke. But I'm I'm not a firm believer in that. I I think that we, my personally, I think that we should go forward with it, and I support this bylaw 100 percent. But if you could just explain why this bylaw would be better. Then waiting another two or three or six months, it might be helpful to the people. To right. If not longer, because the next town meeting is six months away. Right. Um, and that's if they put a bylaw together. So it could be much longer. Um, a, the, um, it's really important, I think, to do it now because. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're saying that what they wanted to do is they wanted to study oh, right. this whole thing. Okay. It and does not need to be studied because right. 81 towns have already performed similar, if not the same, bylaws. This exact bylaw has already been reviewed by the Attorney General for another town similar language. Nantucket put theirs into effect back in 1995. We're looking at over 20, almost 25 years at this point. It's well studied. There's entire states in the country that have put the same or similar laws, and it has brought down their, you know, their tonnage for their trash. Their, um, like California, there's been studies on the plastic bags on their shoreline, us being a shoreline state. We would have hopefully similar results, um, and it's been well tested. I just don't think that Pembroke is, you know, any different than any one other towns in. The, state we're different in some ways yes but regarding the language in this bylaw do we really need the attorney general to review another bylaw that may have one or two words difference and taking six months to study the difference did, and the only one one other question i have is did, do you have any knowledge of any of the um local representatives or uh, senators or whatever that um would be supporting any type of a state bill uh, to be passed so that everybody in Massachusetts has to comply with this? I do not have that information you don't have, okay. right at this moment. I could absolutely get you that information. Um, but in Massachusetts, once 150 towns have passed the law, the citizens can bring it forward because um, it has to be a majority of the towns. Um, and at the rate at which the approvals have gone through over the past three years, I would think we would be at that stage just based on the towns that have passed it, not even, you know, separate senator approval, separate legislation. Okay, thank you. Sabrina, did we ask town council for a review of these articles? 
Did we <coughs> get an answer from yes, town they, council regarding this particular bylaw? Absolutely. They did say that enforcement's problematic. That's pretty much the same on most things of this nature. Yeah, but there was not the, the bylaw stands. Mm -hmm. It stands and it will go through. But they did say there should be more clarification in bullet point number three for enforcement. But right. um, it is passed. Uh, this is the exact verbatim passage in Marshall, including first draft. I mean, it's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to think that there would be a problem. Yep. And regarding enforcement, we've been in touch with Marshfield and many of the other towns have done it, so we have a lot of information on how we can go about enforcing it. Because again, 81 other towns have already done it. Yeah, I think that was the only issue that Carolyn had this morning. And she said it is problematic. Certainly not a language problem. Mm -hmm. Your person wants to come up. Representative from Marshfield. And your um, name? Jean Ryer. Thank you. And um, we have the bylaw in Marshfield, which has been passed and is, been, is going to be implemented January 24th. And if you if you decide to pass, you will be joining Situate, Cohasset, um, Duxbury, Plymouth, Hanover is in the works. Um, so it will be a whole region. Um, <clears throat> that will be with the same bylaw. So it will be much easier to enforce. <clears throat> and um, there's no problem with, we're working with the Board of Health and we're working with small businesses. So it's a pretty easy um, thing to enforce. The other question you had about the gentleman who was on the subcommittee, he uh, came to a meeting that we had and he raised a question about plastics that um, would be in a synthetic bag. That was the one word that he had a problem with, was the word synthetic. And synthetic bags are used in all kinds of things. Um, this is synthetic, and this is what the article was talking about. When you watch polar fleece, the fibers get into the uh, water and they get absorbed and um, taken in by filter feeders like uh, shellfish. And then it causes uh, major problems with shellfish and fish. But this is a synthetic bag, um, and this is a bag that's meant to be used hundreds and hundreds of times. And when it's washed, the fibers don't go into the water, so they don't cause a problem. So that was the one word that was a difference in, in the bylaw that you had, and that this, that gentleman was recommended pass the job. And, um, and you mentioned enforcement. Our, our Board of Health um, said there would be no problem at all in enforcing that bylaw, and um, they have they just add one more line to an inspection they already do of all the businesses in town. And they said the language was pretty standard with everything else, where it's first time it's a warning, then it's $50, then it's $100 uh, for each day you're out of compliance. But that's um, a fine that's used throughout town with other bylaws that bank rules. So I just thought that might help you make a decision. Thank you for coming up. So I just want to point out that our language allows more synthetic to be sold by the businesses, which I believe helps the small business owners because they have more options. So you may be able to provide the bags you would typically see that are they, they handle the canvas, but they might have a, like a hard outside lining. You know what I'm referring to? Yeah. So yeah. our language allows for that. And the discussion with the subcommittee is that they would want to remove that language which so limits the small business owner to only canvas bags. Good. Well, thank you for coming in and giving us a description on why you want this article passed. Uh, please put on the time meeting floor. Uh, one thing before we take a vote on recommendations, I want to point out to the folks at home that this group went out and got many signatures for a petition. This isn't one that we brought forward for the town. It's one the town brought up for itself. <coughs> so you clearly took a lot of time in getting these, all these signatures. Yeah, we so. have 160 registered voter signatures, um, and we got those in three days. So if we had more time, we would have significantly more signatures than people in town who want this by law. <laughs> so, uh, Ed, I think we need a vote on a recommendation. All right. Yes. 
You need a motion? Yes. I would move that we uh, the Board of Selectmen support um, this petition and uh, bring it forth to uh, town meeting vote. Uh, I will unfortunately second it, and the only reason why I'm unfortunate about this, and I, I hate to belabor this, is we're, we are taking from another town, which MMA uh, tells us that it's great to do, steal as much as you can if it's working in other towns. But I know Duxbury and Plymouth are totally different, and Duxbury is more <coughs> friendly compared to this one, how big this, this bylaw is. But I will second it to make sure the people during town meeting can do their will. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I vote aye, and because I, I think the, the selectmen, as a body, should be in unison bringing something forward. Uh, I will have a discussion on the town meeting floor about it. And, uh, you understand that I, I'm not in favor of this, but I, I think if the board of selectmen, uh, as a majority, uh, want to push this forward, then I'll, I'll join you. Okay. I'll go aye. Also, make it unanimous. Alrighty, so this we have recommended this unanimously. Thank you for coming in. I recommend reaching out to all these people before the town meeting. Yes, thank you. Alrighty, next up we have a meeting with the police chief regarding articles 13 and 14, funding of overtime and two police officers. Thanks for coming in, chief. <coughs> Your coffee will be more available. I haven't got one yet. It hasn't been signed yet, sir. It's about to change in seven minutes. Okay. Very good. You can cool. certainly look at mine if you'd like. I'm not sure what the language I'll refer to. Oh, here. Take this. This is, um, that's the excerpt of your ticket. There you go, Brian. Come in. Okay. Thanks for being here, Chief. Hopefully you can help us out. So uh, this all came about because we had inadequate staffing at the police department. And uh, well, we were to the breaking point. We had to do something. So I've already implemented a uh, minimum staffing of four cars on the road plus a desk officer, which is starting to... Uh, cost me an overtime because our minimum staffing isn't that with the full-time people that we have. So I have two articles in, uh, one for overtime to cover the lack of staffing that we have until I can get two people in and out of the academy, uh, which will be February, and we'll graduate sometime uh, June, July, so through the rest of this fiscal year. Uh, Mike, I believe you had a, an issue with this article. There's a chance you to talk to the chief about it. I don't. I, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't really have an issue with the article. Um, I mean, the need is clear. What I have an issue of, and I will continue performing my responsibilities to the town and the board, is um, the issue of one time money. We have. Five hundred thousand in one time money built into this year's budget. Approval of these two articles will increase that to eight hundred thousand. So that's three hundred thousand that we have previously allocated for capital that will now be spent on the operating budget. Um, it's another three hundred thousand that we need to reserve for this year twenty budget to be responsible. Um, and it's really not good fiscal practice to spend one time money on current expenses. The Department of Revenue, the Collins Center, uh, the Collins Center actually forecasts a $1.1 million deficit in fiscal term. MMA, the Association of Town Finance Committees, all warn us not to use one time money for current expenses. The reason is what tends to happen in played out here is the 125,000 becomes 250, becomes 500, and it becomes 800. 
and then it become uh, it just becomes unsustainable because free cash is cyclical. It's not a straight you've actually declined to it as a grow. Um, what you do is you solve a long term problem with short term money. And it tends to make and it's proven time and time again that it makes a permanent problem even worse. And because instead of running four cars in the world for the person in the station, you only need one. Because you actually didn't want to exaggerate, but you created a situation um, that cataclysm is the right word, but just a situation where you suddenly, <coughs> roughly, don't have money. And you have to make uh, corrections and very painful corrections. So, Really, uh, if I didn't get up and say that, it's just I wouldn't be doing it. So on, on that point, and I agree that some of this is one-time money. The overtime that we're going to need to get us through this year to keep the shift strength safe for the town and safe for my offices is one-time money. Because at the end of the year, then you're going to have the, the offices in the academy be graduated. That second part of the article is to pay for police officers. That is going to be added to the budget every year. Now, I get it. You, you need to have this, but you know we have to create a, a safe environment for the police officers to work in. And you know, a, a, a town of 20,000 people and 24 square miles to have three offices on the road is ridiculous. I looked at the, uh, right after the uh, Falmouth, the two officers were shot in Falmouth, I looked at, I went in to see my shift, I came in in the morning, and I have a north car, a south car, a sergeant in the middle, and I looked at the calls that they went on, and, and there were a lot of simultaneous calls, well how's that sergeant supposed to back up two officers at the same time? It can't happen, you can only be at one place at one time. So, th this is a problem that we've had for a long time, I mean I've been in, 32 years on the job, when I first started, we had five people assigned to the midnight shift. And, and in the 90s, we had six people assigned to the day shift, so you could have five cars on the road, and one on the desk. We're trying to get back to that. So is it the right time and maybe the right method to do it? Probably not. Can we wait? Definitely not. We need to take some action. This town handles crises very well. Health insurance went up a million dollars, and what did we do? We found the money and we took care of it. Well, I don't know. I, I, there isn't a big enough box for me to stand on to tell you that we got a problem and we got to fix it. So do I know where the money's going to come from? No. But if we have some surplus money right now, we need to take care of this problem right now. And then we're going to have to deal with our spring budget and figure out how to maintain that. I can't tell you any other way. I mean, the morale of the police officers suffers when there's three cars out there on the road trying to handle everything that they do. We're over 13,000 calls already this year. 13,000 calls. Most of the calls we go to now involve mental health, drugs, or alcohol. You can't send one person to do that. And think about this, all right? The name of police officer that, that died out in Chesna was a routine call. Routine. He was going to a hit and run property damage motor vehicle accident. And Sunday morning, and he ended up getting killed. Falmouth sent two cars because they had them. Two cars to a call of somebody breaking bottles in the street or disturbance. Routinely, we have one person that goes to that. The second car, if they're available, will show up. And two officers got shot. I can't change the workload. I can't reduce the number of calls. We're not making widgets. We're answering calls for service. And we have to do it safely. Every single day on the day shift, the four cars that are on the road right now are busy. They are busy. We do a tremendous amount of custody issues. We do a lot of mental health. We take a lot of people to the hospital on involuntary commitments, voluntary commitments. We do a lot of that stuff. There's no way not to do that without people. Yeah, we have a problem right now. I've already raised the minimum manpower because I had to. I don't have a choice. I cannot not send people. I cannot send people out in an unsafe circumstance. That's not right. That's what you hired me for, to, to try and do the best that we can here. So we need, as a town, to figure out how to fund that. And yeah, is it the best time to do it? No. But we've been trying to do this incrementally, and we're at the breaking point. 
we need to push it forward. I don't have an ambulance fund to take money from. You know, we, we don't raise money where that's not what we do. We provide services, and we have to do it safely, and we have to do it efficiently. And I have to protect the well-being of my police officers. So if you have better suggestions. So what I'm looking for is, is the overtime money to keep my shifts at four cars on the road until July 1st. And I'm also looking to put two people into the February Academy, which I have to start planning on now. I just spent the last two hours in the station working on, on hiring permanent and police officers so that we have trained, ready people to go to the academy um, and get them in the academy. And I have to know sooner than later, because as soon as that, those seats open up, I have to make sure that I have people available. So there's, there's two separate funding. Um, first one is for the overtime to get us through the year, and the second one is to pay for um, two officers for six months so they get to the academy. The town has to realize that that part is, is, is a permanent addition to the budget that has to be dealt with in the following budget. And I'll deal with that in January with the advisory. I don't know what else to do. I have to take care of the town. I have to take care of the people. I have to take care of my police officers. Pretty simple where I come from. As far as the financial part, that's what we all have to put our heads together and figure out how to make it work. Chief, um, in the conversation that we had, you had suggested that the 160000 for overtime would disappear for FY20? Correct. Because I'm filling spots that I don't have permanent people to fill. Fill them all the time. I don't have another choice. But so that for FY20, the increase to your budget would be the two full-time people yes. for a full year, which is around 155000 Correct. That's what I'm estimating, right? Give or take, depending on education levels and things like that. But yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I echo Mr. Buckley's comments. I mean, obviously, this is something that the chief needs and wants, and uh, I, I'm not real sure where we would get the money right now. But that's just where we are on October 1st. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, so, Chief, help us with something if you can. Worst case scenario, next spring, town doesn't even have enough money for what we need going forward. Hiring two people and then having to let them go. Um, just your, your thoughts on a scenario like that, if you can. I think you're going to have to figure out where you're going to get the money. I, I mean, we have a constant influx of calls for service. How do you stop that? You can't close for two nights a week and, and fund five-sevenths of a budget. We have to be available every single day to handle these calls. So I don't I don't know. I mean, this is one of those things when, when you're roof leaking, you, you got to fix it. you got to find out how to fix it. Roof's leaking. So... We have to find out how to fix it. I, I don't see another, you know, case scenario. How do you lay off people? The workload is still there. The dangerousness is still there. You need people to do this. There's no other way of doing it. So I don't have an answer for it. I say that we have to find the money. We have to make this work. So uh, right now, Chief, for your, for your information, you may already know this, but uh, for, for the public's information as well, uh, the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee uh, have been having a joint budget committee discussions and what we're trying to do it's um, it's, it's actually supplementary to uh, the capital fund committee and uh, uh, the what was the name of the the UMass study that was done Call it the long range forecasting, oh, well, long -range forecasting. Uh, <clears throat> so it's it's kind of um, an, an offshoot of all those discussions that we've been having and what I've been saying, and I think what you're suggesting, is that the town needs to reset our budget to the value that we need so that your department can run efficiently and safely. Uh, same thing with the schools and uh, every other department. I just, Proposition two and a half has bypassed us. We are, we are in a position that we need to reset zero. We, we need to reset what the town needs to pay. 
and I understand that. I, I'm certain you do, uh, and other people feel other people feel the same way. It's just a matter of. <clears throat> We, need we missed the meeting at 7.15. All right. Um, so we need, we, need to re we need to reset zero, but we need to get all of our facts together. We need to get every, depart every department head, um, the public all involved so that we can move in that direction. So you don't hire two people and then have to lay them off in, in the spring or, or next fall. Um, and we're working toward that. So that's coming up. And there'll be more discussions coming up way, well before this, this coming springtime meeting. Um, but I need to know for, for this request, we, we're going to need to dig deep to find this. And I don't know where they are. I, I don't know where it's coming from. The town accountant and the town administrator doesn't know where it's coming from right now. So uh, it's a real pinch for us, Rick. I get that, but it's, it's, it's a worse pinch for me. I have to do what I have to do. I mean, I, I just, we have a job to do, and we're doing it. But to do it with less than what we've been doing is, is, is we've got to that point where we can. So, yeah, you have to find this, you got to make it happen. Then again, I've been a supporter of an override, everyone's afraid to say it. I, we were out on a ledge last year, kind of by ourselves, fire department, police department, and DPW. And it shouldn't be that way. The whole town needs a reset. You know, we've, we've done some incredible things in the last 16 years. I mean, we left the school system and created our own. And we've done a lot of good things. But we've, we've been living paycheck to paycheck ever since then. And, we're, we're in, and the town's grown. In, in the types of calls that we have have changed. They, they take more time to, to deal with. We just can't go take a report and, and end it. It's not how it is. I mean, we're trying to trying to make a difference and we're trying to make Pembroke that town that everybody wants to be at, but I also can't do it, you know, with, with two people, three people trying to trying to shoulder the load for twenty thousand population. You know, so we we've got to keep our minimum where it is and the town's gonna to have to figure out what we're gonna do. I'll be more than willing to work with you and to meet with you. I'm not a financial guy. I'm a police chief. And my job is to tell you what I need. And I've been singing this song since I started. This isn't anything new to anybody. And, and we've tried other alternatives and everything else, but I think with, with the events of, of Yarmouth and Falmouth and, and, and Plymouth and, and Weymouth, things have changed. And, and I can't go back and say, yeah, I wish we could have done something else and I can't. That, 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 it's, it's not gonna happen. I have to provide the services that we need. I have to provide the safety for my officers. So whatever it takes on your part, whatever you need from me, I'm willing to do. But I have to tell you, that's a serious incident. This isn't like, well, we put it off for another year, put it off for another year. I mean, there is no putting it off. We're standing right on the, on the edge. Um, <clears throat> I'd just like to say that I think the Board of Selectmen should support the Chief and let this article go into uh, town meeting with the Board of Selectmen behind them. The police fire and the DPW are our first line of defense on what we have in this town. And it's not like um, hiring an extra person at the library or hiring an extra dog officer or hiring somebody somewhere else or giving a lot of people raises within the town to bring the staff levels up and all that other stuff. This is first line defense. The police, fire, and DPW are very important and I really think that we should back the chief on it. Uh, unfortunately, if it gets a town meeting, um, everybody's going to have their views and how it goes on a vote there. We have no idea. But I would like to support you 100%. Thank you. I have to tell you, the, the people that I've talked to, uh, the, the townspeople that I've talked to, are very supportive of the police are fine. They get it. And, and I think they need to know the seriousness of this, you know, because it's our job to let them know. We've got to be transparent about what's going on. I've never liked to discuss the cruiser schemes and, and how many people we actually have out there because we think that's well we're at that point i don't have anything else to tell them other than the truth and we're short handed and, and we shouldn't be. We can't be. chief how has the opioid crisis affected your department again we, we belong to uh, a lot of outreach and, and through that outreach we're realizing that we can't just go after the fact 
deal with it and move on. We actually have to find out what some of the root causes of these problems are. So we're spending more time on calls like that, trying to help people so that we don't have to go back. You know, and again, somebody said, well, if crime rates are down, why do we need more police officers, right? Crime rates are down because we're involved in a lot more things. But the nature and the, and the types of calls that are going on are a lot more mental health. And, and they are a lot more uh, time consuming for the officers and dangerous for the officers. So that's why we need more people. Just to let you know the opioid group that we belong to, Plummer County Outreach, just got a, uh, almost a $500,000 grant for two years to help put some full time staff in. They just awarded at the uh, will be awarded next week at the International Association for Chiefs of Police an award for uh, throughout the country for a, a grassroots program that's actually having some effect, positive effect. And we'll be with them again. We have several people involved with that on a, on a regular basis, on a daily basis, because it's that important to provide this kind of services for our people. Uh, any other questions for the Chief? Nothing. That's not going to be too damn difficult, put it that way. There you go. I mean, we, we've talked before, Rick, and, you know, and I, I do fully support, you know, our public safety because, you know, you guys are on the front line. But same thing, it's, it scares me where the hell they're going to get it. Or basically, if your officers are going to be in harm's way, you know, if you don't, you're not adequately funded. So, like I said, I'm, I'm torn. I'm willing to put it on to town meeting and let the people decide. Uh, for me, like I said, it's a scary thought either way. Yeah. But, you know, I think it's important that the, uh, the police department knows that the board so I can support them because uh, that's important. And I, I know you always have. This has never been a question in my mind that, for that. But, uh, again, harm's way. We're in harm's way to be called a go-to. Mm -hmm. But we got we got to at least try to even up the odds a little bit and, and give them the opportunity, you know, just think about, you know, you have more board of selectmen sitting at that table right now than I have a shift for the entire town. I mean, that's, that's the reality of it right there. So. They're not making the same money, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So would still say you make too much, though. <laughs> Arthur, do you have a question? I just have more of a statement for um, the chief. About three or four years ago, we had a conversation, you and I, about it's going to be unsafe eventually to be a police officer on the street. And I think what you're saying is that day is here. And yeah. I think that regardless of where we take the funding from and if we have to go department by department and do like we did 15 years or so ago and cut, you know, 3% across the board or whatever it happened to be uh, to make the difference up, I don't think you can run a shift of police officers with three officers on the street. I don't think that makes any type of safety sense so I would uh, I would back this in support of going to town meeting you know, I, I think this town has done a tremendous job when, when they're faced with a crisis they always seem to figure out a way to handle it so I'm, I'm just telling you we're at crisis point and I'm, I'm expecting no less than from, from the board from Mike but you know, the people in town to come up with a solution so we can get this to work when we look at it when I started as a sworn officer, 53 years ago, they had three guys on the three guys on the road. So it's time to increase. That's a long time. I would hate to think that we have to go back to that as a normal. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Ed, did we need to take a vote on a recommendation for these two articles? Correct. Take each article uh, individually, right? So each article is individual. Right. I would move Article 13 as written that the Board of Selectmen uh, recommend the article and um, let it go forward to a town meeting vote. Second. All right. The motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Um, I would recommend the article was written uh, to go forward to town meeting for a vote with the selectman's support. Second. All right, there's a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So these are voting passed. Favorable action unanimously. Yeah, uh, question for Ed and Mike. I think it still is town meeting vote, but um, might as well start doing our homework now. Of what can happen? What are the scenarios? Where's the money come from? Well, the reason I got up is I'd, I'd ask you to reconsider your recommendation of favorable action on Article 4 because you can't have you can't spend this thing three times. You previously recommended um, one list of capital items with the exception of the um, <coughs> things funded for the water department. I would ask you to Yeah. So there's about $150,000 worth of free cash that is appropriated for those articles and article, uh, the uh, re request in Article 4, and the rest were uh, borrowing or, as Mike had mentioned, from, uh, from the Water Department. And so Mike, is there specific items you want us to reconsider or everything? Um I just would for tonight's purpose is just remove your recommendation. I got a favorable action on the whole line before I started that off. Uh, Ed or Sabrina, would we need to reopen the warrant right now to do that? No. No. Make a motion to amend the selectman's recommendation to town meeting floor for Article 4. Second. All right, I have a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> uh, Mike, before you go, that, that water money that you talked about, I don't have the article in front of me. Uh, is that part of the enter enterprise fund? Correct. Right. Okay. All right, thank you. That's an easy one. That's just easy. All right. Thanks for coming in, Chief. And thank you, Mike. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> before you go, Chief? Yes. Uh, Matt, this was addressed to you. Would, would you mind speaking to the public about that? Well, it seems here we have a, some glowing praise for Chief Wall from the acting police chief from Wareham. He calls Chief Wall a consummate professional who's an expert in locating missing people. So it seems like he did some great work here. We spent the night over in uh, Wareham. A 12-year-old ran away from a, uh, from a group home there. And unfortunately, she was found the next morning. Uh, scary situation, if I can tell. Uh, well, praise, but I got a lot of help. Have uh, the satellite search and rescue team and a lot of other resources that were there. So, thank you. You didn't have to read that public because it just happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> Great work. <laughs> Timing's Timing is everything. All right, next up, we'll be addressing the board action items. First up, we have a vote to reopen the warrant to include land transfer article. I was regarding parcel F9-1 to be number 19. Mr. Chairman, move to reopen the special town meeting warrant for the insertion of an article 19 as presented. Second. All right, there's been a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I move the selectmen vote favorable action on article 19. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to close the special town meeting warrant. Second. Turn a motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So just so you know what that was about, it was, it was quick, but the school has a piece of property on Route 53 uh, that has been in school possession for years and years and years. They don't know what to do with it. 
they have no need for it, no desire to use it for any of any of their uses. So the school committee members uh, have asked the board of selectmen to put it on the town meeting floor so that the town uh, could take custody of the property, uh, in the hopes that uh, either the town would put it to use, or perhaps the town uh, might consider a sale. Uh, and anyhow. Uh, put the property to use because it's laying fallow in the school committee's hands and it was their request uh, to put it in the town's hands. And we'll talk about it on a town meeting. Thank you. All righty, the description next up, we have vote recommendations for remaining special town meeting articles 13, 14, 17, 18, and 19 if applicable. It's only 18 now. Only 18, 18 now. Yeah. 19 dog done. Yeah, we just did that. Article 18, a citizen petition, and this is a request for a state rep sponsor home rule petition regarding retiree health insurance. Second. Okay, it's been a motion and a second to move the town meeting floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. We have recommended this be moved to the town meeting floor. Next up, we will vote to ratify town administrator's approval of the temporary trailer permit at 23 Selt Sam Way. Move the permit issued by the town administrator. Second. Put a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, we grant the temporary trailer permit. Next up is a vote to appoint Laura DeYoung of 227 Taylor Street to Historic District Commission. This is Abby's Uh We'll be appointing Laura DeYoung of 227 Taylor Street to the Historic District Commission. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All as well. Any opposed? Hearing none, passes unanimously. Next up, we have a vote to, or we have a signing of the special town meeting warrant to post October 9th, 2018. Sabrina, are we signing this right now? Nope, you're gonna wait till the end. All right, we'll wait till the end on that one. Next up, we will vote to approve minutes of September 10th, 17th, and the 24th. Mr. Chairman, move the minutes of the meeting of September 10th, 2018. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. Passes unanimously. Mr. Chairman, vote to approve the minutes of the meeting of September 17th, 2018. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. President not voting. President not voting. I vote aye, so that also passes. And last up, we have September 24th. Mr. Chairman, I will move the minutes of September 24, 2018. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. President not voting. I vote aye. Aye. So that passes as well. So that concludes the board action items. Next up, we have old business. Hearing now, we're moving on to the time ministry report. Uh, very quick, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to announce that the, uh, that our office submitted a grant um, to the Massachusetts Commission on Disabilities uh, to have uh, infrastructure improvements to uh, four buildings and six parks uh, to the tune of two hundred fifty thousand. Um, this was as a result of the fact that the Board of Selectmen adopted the ADA transition plan that we included, uh, so that made us eligible for uh, to apply for this grant, which was due today, and the application went in on Friday. So I have a full list of all of the uh, potential projects uh, for the board's review. But I just wanted to make that announcement. 
Thanks for that, Ed. Next up, we have the Ask the Selectman portion of the meeting. Anything for that tonight? I do. Uh, so I've been I've been contacted by Doc Akabuchi. Uh, it's been a while ago now, so, uh, but I'm just getting around to it. Um, and I'd like the Board of Selectmen to send um, a memo to Conservation Commission and the Open Space Committee and invite them to see the Foundation for Immunity Nature Preserve. Uh, it's I've, I've walked the property myself. It's a it's a it's a tremendous, uh, it's a tremendous walk, uh, beautiful vistas, uh, different environments, wooded, prairie, uh, river. So it's a it's a very diver very diverse ecosystem uh, that is a nonprofit, and uh, Doc would like to show the Open Space Committee and Conservation Commission. Commission and any board of selectmen that wants to go. So I'd like to send a, mo a memo out to all those folks, and if they accept, uh, I'll set up the meeting with Doc, and we'll walk the property, and it's uh, it'd be a, a great afternoon. And something this, to see that's here in, here in Pembroke. Is this um, for future plans of purchasing that property, or is that just? Oh, he wants to see, he wants to sell the land eventually. He's um, um, he's, he's, he's getting on in years and what he wants to do is he wants, he wants the property to, uh, go forward in the right hands. Uh, so he wants those folks to, to take a look at it. Uh, he'd be tickled pink if the town of Pembroke bought it. Um, and if we had the money, we should, but I don't know, I don't think we're in that position right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but he asked if I could bring bring the uh, open space committee and conservation along just to, to view it for themselves, and uh, I, I thought it'd be a great opportunity for them. It's a, it's a great piece of, of uh, Pembroke. It, it is. I I would have to um, um, say the same as you. Um, I've been on the property, and it is a really nice piece of property. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yep. So um, he reached out to me uh, when I walked the property, and. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on the promise that I made to him in that regard. Well, it's a good recommendation. Uh, next up, we have new business. Uh, Mr. Chairman, oh, sorry, I Chairman. have something else. Uh, more of a more public service announcement to the folks out there in Pembroke. Uh, my wife just actually got back from the hospital having pneumonia. And hearing all the stats for the folks in the hospital, for the nurses, the doctors, uh, pretty much asking all residents of Pembroke to make sure they get their flu shots this year or the older residents getting their pneumonia shot. Uh, it's it's deadly. It can take your life like that. And it's just amazing that, you know, my wife's going doing well now. But uh, it's been happening kind of all year. It hasn't really been just happening cold seasons coming up. It was happening this summer, too. And I know one of the residents, they spent about a good 11 days in the hospital, one of our residents, with pneumonia. So please, please, please get your flu shots, pneumonia shots, take care of yourselves. Thank you. Oh, thank God your wife is feeling better. Uh, next up, we have upcoming issues. On October 8th, there will be no meeting in observance of Columbus Day. On October 5th or 15th at 7 p.m., there will be a joint meeting with the moderator and advisory committee. Uh, this is in regards to the town meeting. Also. On that same day, a half hour later, there will be a joint poll hearing with National Grid Verizon at 15 Corporate Park. Well, the meeting's here. It's regarding 15 Corporate Park. On October 23rd, there's a special fall town meeting at 7 p.m. at the high school. On November 5th at 7 p.m., the Board of Assessors will be in, and this is in regards to the fiscal year 19 tax classification hearing. Uh, that's an annual one. On November 19th, there's the Class 1 two taxi and precious metal license renewals will happen. On November 26th, there'll be no meeting and it'll be a Thanksgiving recess. On December 3rd, the common spectacular license renewals will happen. On December 10th, the liquor, live entertainment, Sunday amusement device license renewals will take place. On December 10th, we will set the selectmen's winter break schedule. And lastly, on December 17th, we will discuss the Selectman's 2019 calendar. This is a lot coming up. Ed, is there a need for executive session tonight? Yes, sir. Uh, 
how we do. I would move under Second uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, to conduct contra contractual negotiations with non-union personnel, police chief and fire chief, and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body, and the chair so declares. Superior officers contract and police union negotiations. And the chair does declare. Second. Oh, a second. And the chair does declare. We'll take a roll call. Huh? Yes. 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 All righty, we'll be moving into executive session. Is there a need to come back out? You may, Mr. Chairman. You may. I will be maybe back. Hmm. What Phil's last name? His father was Mr. Bean. I don't know, which is that him. Yeah. They're nice people. Mr. Bean. Yeah, there's a name you haven't heard in a while. Yeah. All right. Coming through by it. Thousand times a week. If you listen, to, there's a couple of people in town saying so many historic houses are coming down. You think he'd still be flourishing? Yeah. Actually, I don't even know if he's still living. <laughs> All right, you're in open session. Yes. As a matter of fact, is everybody's microphone yes. clean? You mind the button? Thank you. Yeah, he was a great guy. Yeah, I didn't know him personally. All right, so it's 8:12 p.m. and you're back in session. All right, we've come back to open session to take a vote. Move the uh, contract with the chief of police as uh, negotiated. Second. Is there a motion and a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So the contract passes unanimously. Ed, was that it for yes, sir. votes left? Motion to adjourn. Second. So motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That concludes tonight's meeting.